Hello everyone. Imagine you are on your own in the library and you start picking your nose. Now suddenly you realize you are doing so and shift your awareness from picking to observing yourself picking your nose. Now you think, oh no, what if someone saw me? And you shift your awareness to imagining as if you were a third person in the library seeing you sitting there picking your nose. And now you start judging yourself. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that, you say. And start seeing possible outcomes in your imagination. Someone telling you to get out of the library. Or someone laughing at you. You think, no, I don't want that. Now you might even bring some memories in there. And see yourself in third grade when you were casually picking your nose in the middle of the class, minding your own business. And a classmate started judging you for it. And the whole class laughed at you. You start having a knot in your stomach. Thankfully, you can bring your awareness back to the present moment. Not in the past, not in the future. Right here, in a meditative state. And observe these thoughts, these emotions, these judgments. And it's all okay. No one saw you. You were fine. Now, when you get conscious of your own actions to a degree where you can imagine observing yourself as a third person judging you, moving from past to future and future to present, and being able to observe these thoughts through meditation, you also become so aware of your own existence. And you might begin to ask yourself, who am I? Why am I here? And what is my purpose? I remember being eight years old, alone, in my room, not picking my nose, I see you coming, no, looking at the stars through my window and asking to this big immense universe these questions. Why am I here? Why? Am I just going to float like that on the river of, of, of life without any meaning? Or is there something more than this? What is my life about? After waiting patiently in a long, silent five minutes without a sign, I figured out I would just continue my eight years old life, which consisted in playing as much as I can, wherever I can. But uh, during the following years, these questions would continue growing in me, stronger and stronger, as my awareness of life was only increasing through adulthood. It is during the summer of 2001, that I hit a point of no return. Indeed, the corona crisis was in full blossom. I broke up with my ex. Nature was suffering from human behavior. I was discovering about the corruption of states and industries, saw the cruelty of animal treatment for food, was suppressing my emotion, people-pleasing, having daily anxiety, and experiencing two beautiful panic attacks. My life couldn't get better. I was broken into pieces and nothing I once knew was working anymore. I was very aware of myself and very aware of the world I was living in. And compared to my 8 years old self this time, I couldn't play Mario Kart on my sister's Nintendo to get rid of these metaphysical questions. I had to do something about it. So since that moment, I began a journey to finding answers heal and live a meaningful life with loving quality people around me. And I made the promise to myself that if I made progress in learning, I would share it with the world because if it served me, it could serve others. So here I am, and this is my perspective on what I learned based on my philosophy studies, wonderful people I met, spiritual books I've read, and my own critical thinking. Make sure you... you you are comfortable, get some juice or a hot chocolate and think along. Why are we here? Well, there are two perspectives in my opinion and they coincide. The first one comes from what is closest to our human senses, the material realm. And the second one, metaphysical, which is a reality beyond what is perceptible to the human senses. Now, to begin our first perspective, if we look at the Earth, we all originated from its water. 
just as we grew from our mother's room with water, all life on earth originated from the earth's womb. Earth is like our mother that nourishes us with food, fresh air, and water. But our bodies will one day die and come back to the earth, merge with the earth. And if our bodies come back to the earth when we die, is it really like a mother? Because I've never seen anyone merge with its own mom after death, huh? That's kind of weird right there. So maybe it's not our mother. Maybe we are the earth. We are the part of earth that is able to look at itself with consciousness and say, hey, that's me, Earth. And all other species are just like me, Earth. So through evolution, Earth created different individualities of itself, like plants, animals, and humans. And it is through this evolution of elements like water shaping into plants, shaping into animals, shaping into humans, that we can observe a shift of consciousness growing from an unconscious feeling of we are one, like water, to I am one, like the individual human being. Now, human beings, being aware of themselves, might think they are very separate of all other species because of this awareness of their individuality, right? But what if that individuality was a way to express the beauty of the earth, a special, unique part of the earth, one that can express its uniqueness and can help other parts by being more aware. What if humans were the protectors of the earth, the one who care for nature's well-being as they are the ones being the most aware of themselves? And with great power comes great responsibilities, said the uncle of Spider-Man. Knowing that working together with other humans, we have different unique skill sets. Knowing that together in our differences, we are stronger than alone. That we are all one earth. And we care for ourselves. And humans being aware are not, be are not being better or not better than animals or plants or water. They are simply a different part of the same organism. The same way that my feet aren't better than my brain, as my brain cannot support my weight, it cannot walk. It would be crashed by the weight if it did that. And my feet cannot create connections and store ideas. So nothing is better than another part. They are simply different. But now, a question may arise here, okay? Where does this conscious energy come from? We can say, well, nature. But where does nature come from? Well, the earth. But where does the earth come from? Oh, difficult question, yeah? This leads us to our second perspective the metaphysical one. Once upon a time, an energy of love was being surrounded with only love exactly like itself, and suddenly it desired to experience itself. Now, it knew theoretically that it was love, but it desired to experience itself as love. But how could it? It was surrounded with only love, just like itself. In fact, there was only itself. There was only love. Therefore, it couldn't experience itself as there was nothing but itself. So, to experience itself as love, it thought it required a different energy, like fear, anger, or envy. Then, the energy of love literally transformed its energy of love into different variations of love and created fear, anger, envy, and many other emotions, energies in motion. 
The same way that white light disperses all visible colors, therefore all colors originate from white light, the energy of love dispersed all emotions, therefore all energies originated from love. For example, being fearful comes from being scared to lose something you love. Being angry originates from wanting to defend something you love because you fear to lose it. Being envious comes from wishing to be or have something you love but don't have yet. Being joyful comes from being able to be, have, express and experience something that you love. And many more emotions were all originated from love just like this. Now in this moment, the energy of love saw progress in its goal to experience itself as love, as it now dispersed all energy originating from itself, from love. But it wasn't quite enough, as the energy of love and its other variations were still connected through energy and through consciousness. Now, love had an idea. What if it lowered its energy so densely that it would be able to create matter? a mother creation for all its patterns, its father ideas. Now, its pattern, father ideas, would enter its matter, mother of all creation, and give life to all energies in motion, emotions in physical form. Would it now be able to experience itself as loving energy? Now, the matter was created in a big bang. A physical illusion of separation could take place between the different energies. But in order for a great illusion to be real, you need to believe it's real and not an illusion. Because the energy of love, although seemingly separated from other energies, was still being everything at the same moment of now. A quick example to imagine this is... If you close your eyes and shut your ears and focus on all the parts of you that are living at the same time in you, the joyful part, the angry part, the adult part, the childish part, the negative, the positive, the imaginative part, the lost, the found, the knowing, the not knowing, the clown, the serious, and so many more parts of you that coexist at the same moment of now in you. How can you experience them? Well, one at a time, you might say, and externally into the world space I live in, with my thoughts, words, and deeds. And that is exactly why time and space were created by the energy of love, in order to be and experience one part of itself at the time. Now, the only two things that were missing were bodies of matter, where individualized parts of the energy of love would experience themselves being and doing one thing at the time, thanks to its limited vehicle of the body. And the second thing was amnesia, of who they really were and where they came from. Because if they would know exactly where they came from, they would be everything at the same moment of now, still connected to the whole consciousness of it all. And so being only one thing, always, everything, every time. Therefore, the amnesia part was crucial to experience the separation fully and for things to matter, to think that events and circumstances were real. For its final step, the energy of love decided to have one conscious part that would always stay conscious in order for it to bring parts of itself back when needed. And then the waves of energy began. The energy of love would go through tunnels of amnesia to enter the matrix of matter, entering bodies, forgetting everything, growing and reincarnating from life to life, from elements to plants to animals to humans, remembering slowly but surely where they came from as consciousness grew more and more to a sense of we are unconscious of elements, to I am conscious of a human being, to I am one with all different parts of me, and experience itself as being one thing at a time, thanks to its limited body in time and space, where 
Thanks to duality and diversity of others, it was able finally to experience itself as love and express what is inside externally. It was because something was high that, exper that it experienced being low, that something was far that it experienced being here, that something was cold that it experienced being hot, that others were different that it experienced being itself. Then one day, the loving energy might have a conscious or unconscious thought to choose to die, which would be choosing to release its energy of consciousness back into the tunnel, bringing itself back to the other realm of pure energy. As matter is energy conglomerated and energy is matter released, it would simply have to release its connection to the material realm by changing its energy form from matter to energy, then returning back home. And the circle of experience would continue forevermore, coming and going from one realm to the other like breaths. And the energy of love would continue forever to expand itself and having forever opportunities to experience itself as love, creating more and more connections between each individual to remember that although they are different, they are all one, simply different parts of the same organism. Therefore, they would choose to help each other more, care for everyone, and make sure that basic needs are met for every part, so that every human being, every animal, every plant, and every element would have dignity and would be able to experience themselves in regard to the diversity. When we look back on what we just said, the first purpose of life was seeing the earth as a living organism, growing first from the unconscious oneness of elements to more awareness of one's own individuality as humans, in order to then being able to realize that we are all part of the same organism, that we are all part of the earth, and help ourselves, help the organism of earth to take care of oneself. The second purpose is the energy of love, being one, but not being able to experience itself, so it chooses to individualize itself into souls in a world of duality in order to experience oneself and remember that it is one with everything else. By remembering that, it would now choose to help ourselves, help the different parts of oneness, of the energy of love, to experience oneself. Now, the material realm and the metaphysical realm seem to be different, just as you and I are different. But I think we are all one. Thank you.